Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a very special video because today I'm going to give you an updated tour of my comic book room slash office and the reason that we are doing this today is because I am leaving this space soon. Uh, so, you know, it has changed drastically since I first showed it to you. So uh, I felt like it was important that you see the evolution at its final state. And then in a couple months when I'm in a new space, you'll get another office tour. I mean, isn't that awesome? Uh, but so the way we're going to do this today is I think we're going to start with the stuff around the room, like the art prints, CGC, statues, stuff like that. And then at the very end, we'll take a, a more insightful look at my comic book oversized hardcover shelf. And I'll sort of, you know, quickly go through each of those books and give you uh, my thoughts and opinions on it. Something that I'm really proud of for this channel, and this isn't a slight to other channels who don't do this, um, but I just like that I do it. Every single book I own, I have read and I have an opinion on, so I'll give it to you real quick as we're going through. So without further ado, let's take a look at The Office. All right, so just so you can sort of get a quick glance around at The Office, here are my prints up there, the statues, the bookshelf with uh, all the omnibuses, of course, some other stuff hung up on the walls. There is my office. You can see I've been playing Red Dead 2. Uh, there's this big wall of comic books. I've got Excalibur issues and Fantastic Four up there. Some CGC graded comics. We'll take a closer look at those a sec in a second in case you can't see it with the glare. Uh, my short boxes with some stuff I need to put away. There's also one print over here. So I think the best way to do this is we're going to start with the prints first on the wall. And so these are Sideshow prints. Uh, they're very beautiful. Sideshow's framing is very expensive though, so I just did it myself. I think it looks great though. First up, we have this Doctor Strange print by the wonderfully talented Alex Garant, who is a Canada-based artist. And uh, you're not seeing a glare. Well, you are seeing a bit of a glare. But if you think the double eye effect is a glare, that is not the case. That is actually kind of her signature trademark. Alex Garant is known as the queen of the double eye. I think it's very cool and very appropriate for this Doctor Strange poster. Uh, my family always tells me this one's a little creepy, but hey, I like staring at it. I like staring at all these. Next up, we have uh, Spider-Man and Mary Jane by Paulo Rivera. He's, of course, in his classic symbiote suit. As you can see, I kind of have a blue theme going on here. Blue, blue, blue. Um, this one's really cool, too. It's got this nice romantic vibe to it that I, I, I've always really enjoyed. Next up, we have this Thor Brimstone. Uh, this is another very cool one. I am drawing a bit of a blank on the artist. I think his last name is Vinderstelt, but that could totally be wrong. Um, so apologies to Mr. Maybe or maybe not Mr. Vinderstelt, but another very cool one. Then we'll take a look at the Heralds of Galactus print, which is also one of my favorite ones. They're, they're all so good, it's hard to pick. Uh, but this one, I love the cosmic explosions in the background of planets and whatnot, all the Heralds. Uh, I like that, the, you know, the Silver Surfer is really showing off his vis physique there. Galactus in the background, etc., etc. Uh, this one, oh, man, I'm also drawing a blank on the artist's name. But it's another spectacular one, and the colors in this one really pop. I was going to put another one here, but, you know, and the, there was going to be another bookshelf here, too, actually, since that one's full. Um, but, you know, since I'm leaving the space soon, I'll save it for another space. All right, we're going to go back to the walls, and we're going to take a look at what I have up here. Um, so, basically, if you're unfamiliar with, like, the current X-Men era, they had their big Hellfire Gala event, which all the X-Men dressed up real fancy. Uh, they actually had real fashion designers, you know, design that stuff. And so I was like, I really liked it. And I grabbed the Hellfire Gala book and I just ripped out the pages and I framed them. And I think they look really good. Uh, these are just $1 store frames also, by the way. That's how you can tell they're very, very cheap. But, you know, I'm not going to replace them since I'm moving. Emma Frost, White Queen in all her three outfits. Colossus looking so cool with his beard and his uh, Russian look. Wolverine, Sage, Domino. Banshee, Pyro, you know, Sebastian Shaw, others, looking very, very cool. We'll go all the way over here. A bunch more X-Men. I particularly like Storm here, like that her cape is sort of just the weather effect. Uh, Betsy Braddock looks great too. Rachel Summers, of course. Cyclops looks like a dweeb as always. Moving on. Uh, we've got the New Mutants here. And then we've got the Hellions group sort of going on here. 
Uh, and then we have, you know, some more X-Men characters, Wolverine, Sink, Cannonball, Sunfire, all looking very cool. So I just thought those were really neat, you know, created by real fashion designers. So put them up, have them rep some of the characters that I really enjoy. All right, let's take a look at these statues now. These are all by Iron Studios. They are the one-tenth scale statues. So first up, we have Iron Man himself from Endgame. Uh, looks very, very neat. I like the explosion effect of his... His suit coming off the ground since it shows that he's flying. And then we have my boy Nightcrawler, Kurt Wagner, uh, looking really cool with that BAMP explosion. He's got a really nice face sculpt here. And fun fact, uh, so he's got that BAMP here, but where did he come from? Well, he came from over here. He teleported from over here to over there. Just a neat little uh, proximity piece they included. Gambit looking dynamic as ever. I love any Gambit statue because his poses are just like, they are made for statues. They look so good. He looks really great here with the card effect throwing. Then we have Jean Grey herself in her X-Men Jim Lee costume. Someone corrected me when I was making my original video on this. For some reason, I thought it was her uh, X-Factor costume, but that's red. But this one is very cool. I like the pose. I like the um, you know, psionic pink energy translucent effect they have going there. And my favorite character, of course, Emma Frost, the White Queen. Also, you know, doing a little psychic hand movement. And they've got the, their bases are all like this rebel from a sentinel attack on the mansion. It's very cool. Emma looks like a, a bamf. And then we have another great X-Men, of course, Storm, who's got this really cool sort of wind tornado effect. You can see there's debris and books caught up in it and whatnot. And she looks awesome. Man, the sculpts on these are really, really great. Highly recommend picking up these Iron Studio statues. Way more affordable than other statues. And look, you can fit a bunch of them. Okay, Colossus here looking like a built man too. Jeez, dude, hitting the gym. But I mean, it's Colossus, what do you expect? Very cool statue as well. Look at those abs, man. Look at those boots, what a classic outfit. And then randomly we have Mysterio here, but just, you know, I thought this statue was really cool from Far From Home. Uh, you know, maybe the Taylor Swift fans have something to say about this. I don't know. I don't really know what's going on with that. I just know that everyone was hating on Joe and Hall lately. But, you know, Joe and Hall isn't actually Mysterio. Although, maybe you should hate on Mysterio because he's a bad guy. But this statue is really cool. I love the green mist illusion effect. Love the hands. Love his fishbowl, etc., etc. Very cool. So... Here's sort of what all the statues look like together. Give you a good look. Crouch down here so you can see. -na 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 -na. Very cool. Um, hopefully, when I get my new place and my other shelf, I'll get some more of these statues. There's some cool ones coming out later in the year. Specifically, really want Magic, uh, Scarlet Witch, Forge. Are they doing a Sinister? No, not a Sinister. I hope they do a Sinister, but they're doing an Apocalypse as well. So let's get to the book. Psych! We're not there yet. Sorry, guys. Okay, just going to showcase this one more time so you can see when I'm doing my work and etc. or whatnot, I can just, you know, sort of look up and see the Fantastic Four or Excalibur. Really like Excalibur. I think their covers really pop and are perfect for displaying. But Fantastic Four, you know, they also have great covers and you've got to appreciate the first family sometimes. They don't always get the love they deserve. They certainly don't get it when it comes to film adaptions. Um, but, you know, just I thought this was a cool idea. I'm going to do it with my new place as well, probably, but I think I'm going to put up some mini series and then some probably current Krakoa X-Men stuff. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what I end up doing. All right, on to the CGC comics over here. But first, quick pit stop at this little storm pin. I just thought that was cool. It's from the X-Men animated series. I picked it up just because, you know, sometimes I just like wasting money on junk. Okay. This is my first CGC comic I ever got. It is X-Men number 129. It is a 7.0. Why is this important? Well, it's the first appearance of my favorite character, Emma Frost. It is also the first appearance of another one of my favorite characters, Kitty Pride. Um, I got this at a great time. It's a very hot book right now. I got it right before it sort of shot up. Uh, very, very cool. Very happy to have this in my collection. All right, next up. A signed CGC book by Chris Claremont. This is uh, New Mutants number 14. It's a 9.2. Uh, this is the first time uh, Ileana Rasputin is sort of known as magic and, you know, as she's joining the New Mutants team. I was trying to, you know, get the first appearance of magic and I ended up getting just a few 
ran the books like the first adult appearance, the first like time she is magic. I, I guess really the first appearance is uh, Giant Size X Men number one, where she's just a kid and we see a brief glimpse of her like saying goodbye to Colossus or whatever. But I'm happy with this one and I'm happy to have this signature by Chris Claremont. All right, this is the latest one I just got. Uh, the other day, it is uh, New Mutants number 16. It's 9.6. It's also, as you can see, signed by Chris Claremont. And it's uh, it says up here, first appearance of Thunderbird, the second, James Proudstar, who later becomes Warpath. Uh, that is true. And I don't know why they didn't put this up there, but it's also the first appearance of the Hellions. It's the first appearance of Cat's Eye, Empath, those guys. And I got it specifically because Cat's Eye is such an underrated character. I love Cat's Eye so much. I think she's so cool. I don't know what it is about her, but I just like relate to her so hard. And I, you know, I'll probably talk about this way, way more in a future video and sort of go into a deep dive of why I like her. Uh, but you know, I just had to grab it. I had to grab the Hellions first appearance because I think they're a really really cool group so there you have it all right in my short boxes down here um look I just grabbed the Firestar miniseries actually I just got all four issues short box I'm not going to give you a tour of what's inside there but uh what is relevant is there are a couple more CGC graded comics here that I just you know I am not going to do any display stuff with because like I said I'm moving uh but here is She-Hulk 9.2 first appearance of She-Hulk oh whoa whoa whoa, whoa. Put that on there. Uh, here is the first American appearance of Psylocke, Betsy Braddock. 8.5 and New Mutants Animal number 2. And then here's that other sort of magic thing I was trying to, to get. See, this is the first appearance of adult Ileana. It's when she comes out of limbo. So, you know, I've got a few magic things laying around now. I also have her mini-series in here, but whatever. All very cool, and I like the character a lot, so happy to have them all. All right, guys, so it's time to take a look, sorry, my chair is squeaking, <laughs> at the Omnibus shelf. I'm going to try to do this in sort of a uh, coherent and cohesive, quick way, uh, but I'm not very good at brevity, so we'll see how I do, but hopefully we can sort of scan them quickly, and I'll give you like a quick thought on each one of them, and, and we'll be able to get this done uh, relatively fast, but maybe you'll like this being long, I don't know. All right, let's take a look at this first little shelf up here, uh, or this first little cube. All right, so we have Annihilation, which was a uh, Marvel cosmic event that I thought was okay, but maybe a little overrated. And then there was Annihilation Conquest, which I liked a lot better, and I thought um, Nova was really, really special in that one. And I, I liked his uh, his sort of mentality with the world mind, is it called? I don't remember. Uh, New Avengers is a fun Avengers run by uh, Brian Michael Bendis, although I guess fun isn't the right word to use because it's a little tragic, especially in the beginning. Uh, there's a prison break, and there's some maybe, maybe not Avengers who kind of get wrecked. But speaking of Avengers getting wrecked, uh, um, we have Jonathan Hickman's two Avenger omnibuses. Uh, this is getting reprinted. I highly recommend picking it up. Uh, these are two of my favorite omnibuses that I own. That in storyline of the incursions is incredible, and it leads up to like the God Doom stuff with the newer Secret War. Okay, we have West Coast Avengers, which is also a really great series. Um, that I kind of doubt will ever get a reprint, but uh, never say never, I suppose. But uh, I really enjoy that series, and it has some cool Hawkeye, Moon Knight, Mockingbird, Tigra stuff in it. Pym as well, and Ultron stuff is there too. Uh, then we have Captain America by Dan Jurgens. Um, a lot of these more newer Captain American ones, uh, I've done overviews on the channel. So I'll just say, um, you know, Captain America, not my favorite character. Uh, I do like the Brubaker run a lot, but these other ones sort of fell a little flat for me, like the, the Captain America Rick Remender run. Okay, then we have Captain Marvel, which uh, is her older stuff. And funny enough, I did a media analysis essay on this omnibus in college, and I wish I knew about the X-Men at the time because I would have done it on them instead. I mean, I knew about the X-Men, but I wasn't reading X-Men com uh, comics, and I didn't realize that they were so intertwined with, you know, social issues that are important to me. Okay, uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider, super fun. I really enjoyed the Thanos stuff in there. Um, interesting concepts of, like, legacy and whatnot, in a way, I guess, and, like, darkness within. Uh, I don't know. I have an overview of that, too, where I talk a little bit more in depth of it with a little fresher perspective since I just read it. Absolute Carnage, love this one. Um, the tie-ins at the end, not so much, but I think you'll you'll see that's a, a theme with, like, these event books, that I like the main event, but then I get bored with the tie-ins. Okay, we have the other Carnage Omnibus, which is just a collection of a bunch of his little mini-series. 
Um, those are fun. There's like Carnage USA in there uh, and some other good stuff. And I think there's the introduction of a couple new symbiotes in there, at least one of them. Maybe. <laughs> All right, the Daredevil shelf. I really, really love Daredevil. I think he's like consistently written so well, except that first omnibus you see there, which is the Stan Lee uh, one. I just... He sucks there. It's just, it's a boring, boring read. It's really hard to get through. In my opinion, at least. You might love it, and that's okay. The Brian Michael Bendis Daredevil stuff, I really enjoyed. Um, the Brubaker stuff, I really enjoyed. That's sort of when he's in prison, I believe. Daredevil Shadowland, I even enjoyed Shadowland to a degree. It, it has its, like, sloppy moments, but uh, overall it's fun. Maybe it just came a little too quickly. There should have been a little more build-up to it, but is what it is. Uh, Daredevil by Mark Wade is a more lighthearted approach to Daredevil, but still deals with those heavy themes. So um, that's really nice to see. You kind of get like this uh, this tonal sampler if you read all these back to back. Just you can avoid that first one. Oh, and then I have the Daredevil um, by Frank Miller companion omnibus, um, which you know the Frank Miller stuff is classic. Uh, but I unfortunately don't have that actual omnibus, just the companion one. But the stuff in the companion is good too. I really like that. And I think it was the first Daredevil thing I read, actually. Okay, Deadpool minibus is the only Deadpool on those I have. I used to have others like the Joel Kelly one, which I sold. I just don't like Deadpool that much. Uh, we can leave it at that. He's all right, but just one of my least favorite characters. Doctor Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme Omnibus. This is getting a um, volume three. I wasn't able to pick up volume two, so I don't know if I'm going to pick up a volume three. Uh, but I, I thought the stories were, were quite um, whimsical and exciting. Uh, Earth X by Alex Ross. I really don't like this series. Um, it was incredibly boring for me to read, and I'm sorry to anyone that likes it, but it w just wasn't my taste. Um, artwork is great. The covers by Alex Ross are great, but the story is not so great. Uh, then we have Excalibur, which is one of the, my favorite omnibuses, uh, probably top five in my collection. It was such like a sleeper hit for me. I got this totally on a whim. Uh, I didn't even realize Kitty Pride and Nightcrawler were on the team at that point. And then also we get the introduction, well, I don't know if she's introduced in this, but we get Megan in this, who is this awesome empathic shapeshifter that Marvel needs to use more in the Krakoa era, but they just, she's sort of been regressed to just this housewife status, at least in my opinion, from what I've read in the Krakoa era. And, uh, you know, I hope no one takes that the wrong way. I'm not trying to rag on her. I just, I think she has a lot of potential. I wish writers would do more with her. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of characters to balance, so I understand that's also sort of a a big ask, but just please, I like Megan so much. Someone do something with her. Uh, then we have the Fantastic Four omnibuses. You know, this is just the classic Stanley and Kirby stuff. There's the fourth one. Uh, as you can see, I don't have volume one, but that's getting reprinted and it's kind of got those ugly new spines, but at least I'll have a um, sort of cohesive look for my Fantastic Four ones. Then we have Fantastic Four by John Byrne, which is a really exciting run. Introduces a lot of cool stuff. We get like Terax, we get some awesome Doom stories. Uh, if you can find that one, you should grab it. I wish I had volume two where She-Hulk joins the team, but unfortunately I could never uh, find that one. Then we have Fantastic Four by Wade and Waringo. Apologies if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I often don't have to say these names because I'm just reading, but here we are now. It's possible I'm looking like a fool. But that's a fantastic run, uh, notable for Doom um, turning one of his ex lover's skin into awesome, powerful, mystic armor. Uh, very dark stuff in there, um, but it has a good balance of like the core family value stuff of the Fantastic Four. And then we have the Fantastic Four by Fraction and Bagley. Um, don't go into this one expecting a you know normal Fantastic Four story because they kind of have to leave because Reed is sick. And while we do get them in it um, fairly often, the focus is of a new Fantastic Four team. Then we have these three Guardians of the Galaxy omnibuses. We have the Abnett and Landing one, which is really fun. We have the Brian Michael Bendis one, which I liked. A lot of people don't like, but, uh, you know, that's fine. It says Volume 1, but I guess we, we're never getting the Volume 2. Uh, <laughs> then there's the... Uh, this is the Gary Dugan. Jerry G Dugan? Oh, my God. See, I'm just... With these names, I'm going to sound ridiculous. That one's fun, too. Uh, it's really tiny, as you can see. Most notable thing I remember is they pull off, like, a collector heist. Okay. And then we have a World War Hulk, which I enjoyed that main event. It's Hulk coming back to Earth after the events of Planet Hulk and sort of getting his retribution on the people who had sent him away. He kind of creates this Thunderdome thing, actually. I hate all the tie-ins, though. At the end, as I always do with these 
um, event omnibuses. Maybe I should stop buying event omnibuses. I sold my War of, Rel one, uh, War of Realms one because of that. Um, and that was a thick omnibus. It was like one of the biggest ones I had. And it was mostly just the tie-ins. Okay, uh, the Invincible Iron Man by Kurt Busiek. There's the two there. It's the Iron Man and then the Iron Man, the mask and the Iron Man. I actually think these books are really fantastic. I know some people take it, um, exception with the suit coming to live and that second omnibus and whatnot. Uh, but I think that concept is cool. I think the concept of, like, the cult of Iron Man is really cool. And I think, like, the prose writing that Kurt Busiek does in here is really fantastic. And, uh... I'd recommend you, you reading that one if you're a fan of some Iron Man stuff. I would not so much recommend the Dan Slott Iron Man omnibus because it's kind of just this very surface level Iron Man story. Had the potential to be something really cool talking about uh, the rights of artificial intelligence, but they really, like I said, they just scratched the surface there. Uh, Loki Journey into Mystery, probably one of my most um, controversial opinions here, but I found that uh, well, let's just say I found it overwhelming. It, I, I couldn't get too into it. This Moon Knight omnibus, it's kind of rough in the first half. It's really older stuff um, that doesn't, you know, it's not the Moon Knight we quite know. And then it starts picking up. i um, curious if the second volume will be any good. We'll see. I don't know if I'm going to pick it up or not. The New Mutants omnibus, volume one. Yes, the New Mutants. They are so great. They are some of my favorite X characters. This is one of my favorite X spinoffs because the X spinoffs are so good. And the New Mutants are this, like, Charles Xavier's New Mutant team that just, they're all also from, like, these different backgrounds, and they all have these awesome, like, character evolutions, and their dynamics with each other is super fun. And the stories get super heavy, and they deal with, like, this really, really heavy um, subject matter. And I, I really recommend anybody who likes the Mutants to pick that one up because you will not be disappointed. Speaking of not being disappointed... The New Warriors, Omnibus Volume 1. There's a Volume 2 coming soon, so grab Volume 1 while you can. Uh, but this is a really fantastic run, too. A friend had recommended it to me, and I was putting it off. And then I saw Firestar was in it, and I was like, hey, I love the Hellions, and I like Firestar, so I'm going to check this out. And I loved everyone in it. Everyone was so good. Firestar, Marvel Boy's fantastic, Speedball's really fun. Um, Night Thrasher's a little um, edgy, but, you know, he's got a good heart. We like him. Namorita's really cool. Uh, am I missing someone? Maybe. Probably. But, guys, pick this one up. It's awesome. It's got, like, kind of this environmental theme to it, too, at first. Um, and also, like, anti-corporate theme, which is really fun. And, like, I, I was surprised that this is, like, older material that is sort of tackling that subject matter. Um, really good stuff, though. Uh, and the twists and turns in it are, are special, too. I won't spoil anything, but pick it up. All right, these two Punisher omnibuses, they're Punisher Max omnibuses. Uh, let me just say, I'm like kind of past the, the point in my life where I enjoy, truly enjoy like this super edgy type Punisher content. I know these Garth Ennis runs are like pretty notable um, and iconic for the Punisher, but they're okay. There's not a lot of substance to them is what I feel, but maybe, you know, maybe my uh, analysis of them is just not good. Uh, that could be totally the case. All right, Runaways by Brian K. Vaughn. Fantastic omnibus. I feel like it's an underrated omnibus. I don't hear people talk about it that often. It's about these kids who kind of figure out that their parents are part of this evil cult. And uh, I guess I can tell you they run away, right? Because that's the title. Secret <laughs> Invasion. Uh, another event omnibus where I like the main event, but then afterwards I'm like, well, I already know what happened. Why am I reading these tie-ins now? Maybe they have to like interject the tie-ins in a more... Um, streamlined way than just put them all at the end after you know what happened. The She-Hulk omnibuses. I was excited that these came out because I really liked the character of She-Hulk or, uh, you know, I didn't know that much about her, but I wanted to get into her. Now I know a lot more about her. That sensational She-Hulk by John Byrne is super fun, uh, super funny, uh, plays with the medium of comics in a really interesting way. I have a whole video on that one if you want to go check it out. The Dan Slott one, it also has its good moments. It's more modern, more lighthearted. It's got some TVA stuff, got some lawyer stuff. Um, it's all right. Still worth reading, I think, but not as special as the other one. All right, moving on, we have Miss Marvel. She's getting her Disney Plus series next year, right? Uh, it's a good read there. Hopefully we get a volume two. Um, but this is sort of just her origin story, so if you're looking for a good introduction to the character, and I don't know if this is still in print, but if it is, you can pick that up. If not, I'm sure you can find the material and trade paperbacks if you don't mind having those. Then we have Spider-Gwen, which is fun for people who sort of want to take it their, 
they want to dip their toes into spider stuff but don't want to deal with like peter parker 616 continuity you can just have fun with spider gwen in her own separate universe then we have the superior foes of spider-man by nick spencer that's a pretty fun run also light-hearted very comedic uh i don't know why they don't have a superior spider-man on those but they had this that's sort of a weird um choice marvel but hopefully we'll get it one day hopefully next year because it's the spider-man anniversary right okay then we have The Amazing Spider-Man by David Michelini and Todd McFarlane. I have a video on this one as well, but it's all the awesome Venom uh, Carnage stuff. So, of course, it's iconic. Gotta pick it up. Speaking of iconic, uh, someone told me a new collection is complete without this Roger Stern Spider-Man omnibus. And look, I have it now. I read it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, uh, this one's still available, I think, so I recommend picking it up. I do not recommend picking up this Spider-Man by John Byrne omnibus. It is sort of just this mishmash collection of random John Byrne stuff, and then the stuff that is sort of, um, it's just not good. I, I don't, I don't like it that much. It sort of just retells a lot of stories, honestly. Uh, Clone Saga stuff, it's okay. I'm not the biggest fan of the Clone Saga. The stories were still fun. I, I enjoyed them, um, but I didn't end up picking up any of the other Clone Saga omnibuses, and now I kind of regret it because they're out of print, but it is what it is. Then we have the two omnibuses by J. Michael Straczynski. These are really great. I uh, know some people don't like the spider totem stuff, but I thought it was fine, even if it doesn't quite work. And it was fun, you know? And Peter Parker is a teacher here. Everything feels right. He has some awesome battles here. It's a cool book. Uh, cool run. I recommend picking it up. It does have something messy in the end of it, um, but I'm sure everybody knows sort of the notable awful spider-man stories <laughs> and we don't need to talk about them because we could just we could rant all day couldn't we okay ultimate spider-man by brian michael bendis and mark bagley fantastic really really enjoy this omnibus it's the first one that i ever got actually so it holds a special place in my heart it's getting a reprint here it might have happened already actually if not it's this month um but guys, you got to do yourself a favor. Pick that one up. It is the most easily accessible Spider-Man story. Then we have the Death of Ultimate Spider-Man, which is sort of a continuation of that. Although we should have gotten a volume two between um, these two omnibuses, but we, we didn't. We just got Spider-Man and then Death of Spider-Man. But okay, whatever, Marvel. Hopefully we get a volume two now that the uh, other one is getting reprinted. Buy it so it sells well so we can all get a volume two. Then we have the... Uh, Miles Morales, the ultimate Spider-Man. This is Miles in the Ultimate Universe. Uh, really great stories there that introduce him, you know, his powers, invisibility, the Venom Blast, and then his spider powers, obviously. And then eventually, after the events of Ultimatum, he comes over to the main 616 continuity, and we get the Spider-Man Miles Morales omnibus that is right next to that one. Then next we have the Untold Tales of Spider-Man on the bus sitting right there, and that is basically sort of these filler or in-between stories of some of the OG Spider-Man years and whatnot. Uh, just picked that one up recently, still going through it. Uh, then we have the What If, the original Marvel series, Volume 1. I really enjoyed this, and I'm looking forward to Volume 2 coming out soon. Then we have these two Wolverine omnibuses that are full of iconic Wolverine stuff. Wolverine's a great character. I know he's uh, overused a lot, but... It's because he's got a lot of potential. He's got this sort of interesting duality of man where he's got his berserker animal rage side. And then he's got this noble warrior samurai side that he's trying to balance out. And uh, it's fun. We've got iconic stuff like the Kitty Pride Wolverine miniseries in there. Weapon X, uh, Havoc, and uh, Wolverine Meltdown. All that stuff. We have Wolverine Goes to Hell, which is the first Wolverine omnibus I ever read. I probably didn't understand it that much since I didn't read any X-Men at the time either. So I just thought it was okay. It didn't get me hooked on Wolverine or anything. Then we have Laura Kinney Wolverine. That is all new Wolverine. Uh, this is a sort of more lighthearted run. It gives us Gabby, though, who was a really awesome addition to the Wolverine family. And, you know, I like um, Laura as well. Then we have The Ultimates, which, speaking of edgy, when we were talking about Punisher, uh, that is such an edgy run. It's uh, It's got its merits, and it's it's pretty good overall, but like I said, just know you're going to, if you're going into it, you're going to get some edginess. Uh, X Factor by Peter David. This is so fun, and there is just, like, this wacky energy that it is imbued with. I'm sorry, I just had my finger, like, right over the camera. Um, but yes, X Factor is awesome. It's a Havoc-led team. I love Havoc. I think he's the better Summer's brother. Sorry, Cyclops fans. Then we have X-Men Grand Design, which is sort of fun for those of us who have um, a more knowledgeable timeline of the X-Men in Marvel continuity. Not that I'm an X-Men expert at all, I'm not. Um, but you, it's just fun to have some back knowledge there because basically 
that is Ed Pisker sort of uh, taking all the X-Men stuff, extrapolating it, and turning it into one cohesive timeline um, that is away from everything else. It's fun. It's sort of like a, an X-Men history book. Then we have Claremont's um, Uncanny X-Men Volume 1. Obviously fantastic. Do I need to say? I mean, it introduced to us the most iconic X-Men team ever and some of the most popular comic book characters of all time and made them who they are today. Um, then we have X-Men The Dark Phoenix Saga, which is uh, it's kind of acting as a volume two for me right now since uh, I don't have the volume two, which I'll, I'll be getting soon. Um, but I don't know why this omnibus exists, really, and I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Well, maybe I'll give it away um, on the channel when I get the volume two. It's just such a weird book that they made. They're also making that Phoenix omnibus later in the year, but that, that's another story. Then we have Uncanny X-Men <laughs> omnibus volume four. As you can see, I'm missing three as well. But like I said, the Uncanny X-Men original Claremont run is just fantastic. I'm sorry, I keep putting my finger over the, the lens. That's my bad. Uh, then we have the X-Men Omnibus by Chris Claremont and Jim Lee. Fantastic stuff. We get, like, the Outback era. We get, like, Jubilee, Rogue, Gambit, all that part of the team and whatnot. Uh, we ha also have, like, Asteroid M and stuff. This is where uh, Claremont finishes his run. Then we get, like, Omega Red and stuff like that. Awesome, awesome stuff, guys. Then we have the Age of Apocalypse storylines, these two omnibuses. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the Age of Apocalypse stuff, but I will say I think it is my favorite variation of Cyclops. Um, but some of the stories in there are just kind of, they, they bored me a little bit. But then we have the new X-Men by Grant Morrison, and this is the first X-Men omnibus that I took a chance on and picked up. Got me completely hooked on the X-Men, made me fall in love with Emma Frost as a character. It's a really great run, really fantastic. Um, it is a little edgy at times. It's, it's a little dated, which is funny that that feels dated uh, when, like, the original Claremont stuff doesn't feel dated to me. <laughs> Um, but, you know, it's just in the early 2000s, I think comic books were trying to capture this sort of more mature, like, we're not for kids feeling uh, that they didn't need to be trying to do. Um, but it's a really good run. Just know, again, you're going to get your certain levels of edginess in it. Then we have The Astonishing X-Men by Joss Whedon. This is fantastic. I've done an overview of this one as well. Great Emma Frost stuff. Great Kitty Pride stuff. Great Colossus stuff. Uh, it's just an awesome run, guys. Then I have my um, non-omnibuses, but, you know, just filling out X-Men continuity. It's the House of X, Powers of X, which is sort of the introduction to the Krakoa era. Uh, and I love the Krakoa era. And this book, it's, like, emotional, or it makes me emotional in some ways. There's some really beautiful stuff in it. And uh, it's got the Moira retcon, which is pretty cool. X of Swords is up next. Um, X of Swords is this awesome Arako Krakoa Um Otherworld type event that uh, happens in the Krakoa era. Um, I probably won't say much more about it, but um, it has its good parts and it has its bad parts, but overall, I it's fun. I like it. Uh, and you should read it if you are into the Krakoa era of X-Men. And it's you kind of have to. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of required reading to understand the context of some of the stuff that goes on later. We have this Ven Omnibus, which I'm not the biggest fan of, to tell you the truth because it's like the Lethal Protector Venom stuff, and then just a bunch of mishmash of Venom miniseries that I just didn't think were that good. Um, and then we have the Dazzler Marvel Masterworks right there, just the only Marvel Masterworks I have. Well, actually, I have Volume 2 of Dazzler, but I'm reading it right now. Uh, so, yeah, guys, that is... Oh, well, let me say, Dazzler's great. I didn't want to slight my girl Dazzler. She is really great. But that is it, guys. That is... We did that in 21 minutes, which I thought I could do it in 10, but I guess I was kidding myself. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Please let me know you're out there watching these videos so I can uh, continue to be motivated to make them. Uh, and let me know what you want to see on the channel. Thank you very much, and you all have a great rest of your day.